Hmm. So, King, you can just give out pieces of that bad boy, huh? Why don't you give some of that to me? What's up, guys? Hello, Hunter. You're here to do a breakdown and review for Chapter 153 of Four Nights of the <coughs> which is known as Toward New Adventure. And, ladies and gentlemen, I'll be gosh darned. I'll say, I'll say, I'll say. He's gonna get diabolical and devious quite quickly in this endeavor. But we have so much to talk about. And quite a decent amount of time. So let's not waste any more time. And let's hop right into it. Editing me. Are you ready? Three, two, one, go. What's up, guys? That guy with a pencil here. Fun fact, I do happen to have it on me and keep it on me at all times. Any another fun fact? <sighs> Some things just make your heart go tick-tock, tick-tock, don't it? Some things just make you feel good inside. Some things just put a smile on that face. And this chapter sure is one of them. So, we open up with this nice little beautiful hint of Percy's slowly but surely new time skip design and i'll admit and you know well, i'll get i'll get into it but we do see that nasi is like i'm just gonna i'm gonna go wild i'm gonna go crazy i'm gonna go stupid i'm just gonna cut like crazy and brother's like yeah sure go ahead you can cut all you want <laughs> i need someone to fill in until i get back to end and then we get to see <laughs> that everything is back to normal quote unquote as we see king says well, I never would have guessed it. The only way to wake you up wasn't by medicine or magic. It was your friends being exposed to mortal danger. Here's my... You know what the fu <sighs> part of Part of me feels mixed on this as an entire... Here's the thing. This doesn't get denied anywhere in this chapter. And notably, Percy reveals what see this is this is the thing i'm a future man I, I've, I've already done seen the future i've read i've done live reactions for 153 184 185 we can check it over on patreon for as low as one dollar month you can remember for as low as three dollars a month and you can check out those live reactions but with that being the case this doesn't get denied and we find out that percy he got info he he been watching and lurking a whole bunch of places a whole bunch of different times so you mean to tell me that over that two year period there was not a single time any of his homies were in mortal danger huh why specifically is it just because of the proximity because we know once again we know Percy he be, he been he been spying that boy got his magnifying glass everywhere he be looking he been looking so there's that which kind of feels weird and two so you abandon your friends so they won't be put in mortal danger. But then, when they get put in mortal danger, you come back. So why'd you leave in the first... Like, I don't know. That's that's my only thing. This... this I feel so weird, like, as a whole about this arc. I won't even lie to you. Like, there, like I'll do an arc review now that it's over. But, like, I, I want to do a full reread. I want to th sit down. I want to think about it. I want to put my brain into it and really, like, get my feelings about the arc. But it feels so weird. Like, not even... Because, like, don't get me wrong. I get it. You you really don't write your story without your main character. Like, I'm even trying to think of, like, big series that have done long swaths of time without their main character. And that's a spoiler, so I won't cover the one I'm thinking of. That's a recent series. It's one of my favorite series. And I mentioned it before on the channel, but I don't want to go too in-depth on that. But technically, Dragon Ball has gone long swaths of time without its main character. There are times when there's really the entire Namek saga, a lot of the Saiyan saga. Well, in fact, it's like a big repeating part of Z that Goku doesn't appear until the last second. So technically, that's writing a story without a main character. I think that that went on for a while. Like, there, there are large chunks of Z where Goku's just not there. So there's that. There are large chunks of Naruto where Naruto's not the focal point, but typically you're following Sasuke or the female lead in Sakura or the sensei in Kakashi, whatever that's happening. It's very rare that you get an extended stint without Naruto. I uh, Bleach, there was a, realistically, I, I think I can cover it now because the anime is finally caught up. There, there's a, especially in the Thousand Year Blood War, there's a lot of time where Ichigo isn't there. But I forget how long it is in chapter pacing and how much that chapter pacing translates to real life pacing because. I got kind of sped through Bleach, so I don't I don't have like a solid grasp of the 
gap between Ichigo going to the Soul King's Palace and Ichigo coming back from the Soul King's Palace. I know it's a decent chunk of time, though. A lot happens. But I do genuinely think it would... It, ah. That's the, that's the catch-22, though. Because I get it. You don't write a story without a main character too much unless you're feeling very, very bold and brave. So you need to bring Percy back. So the best way to do that, put his friend in the mortal danger and have him wake up because of that. But by giving that excuse and then revealing that that man's been watching anything and everything, kind of feels weird, kind of makes the last two years feel like they have no stakes. But we know they do have stakes because someone's in the cauldron of Onfuin. Is that not mortal danger? And the other thing about this is that it kind of, like it makes Percy leaving... Almost no. I low key wish he was like forcefully summoned back. Like I wish something like say Kion did or one of the other nights. I wish someone had just like forced Percy back into his body, because with him just coming back and once again future man speaking here, him coming back and being so blase about it too. Like dude, why'd you even leave? Like like that's that's a, that, that's my thing. And I get it. You gotta have a time skip. Well, not as, you don't have to have a time skip, but you gotta have a time skip, right? So, so you do that. You make the time skip happen one way or another in order to make the time skip happen. But it feel it feels so arbitrary now because you would have been better off just sticking around if you're gonna come back for the same reason you left. That that feels so. It feels so loose to me. It makes sense. Once again, it, it, that's the thing. I'm in the catch twenty two where it, it's not like illogical, fully. Like it makes sense that Percy would just do this is because I don't want to put y'all in danger. And then came back the moment they were in danger. It does make sense somewhat, but still, it's like man, you could have just had Kai and something back, or Tristan, or have some force which will go on, or save the body, like something else. I think would have been more suitable to just Percy coming back and then being like, yeah, I'm back. I'm swole, got taller. New magic powers. Less of a care for your humanity. I'm a light spirit now. Hey. But I'm hoping... The, the one thing that gives me hope is that there are going to be repercussions for it on some level character-wise. Once again, future man speaking here. I know there aren't for the Percy Platoon. Nasin doesn't care. Donnie doesn't care. And Anne cares, quote-unquote. But I'm hoping Lance gets on his... I'm probably not Lance either. That's the thing. I'm hoping Tristan gets on his case. I'm hoping Gawain gets on his case. I'm hoping I'm hoping someone actually gives him some nonsense for pulling that stunt. Because that caused the time skip. That put them in mortal danger in of itself. It's one of the most selfish things he could have done. And I'm hoping there's some sort of blowback other than maybe one or two panels. Or a partial chapter. I'm hoping. Because that's a big thing. The thing that's different. Because I know a lot of people are going to be like, well, Pencil Man, if you feel so passionate about Percy causing the time skip, what about Meliodas causing the time skip? He died! The man was murdered. Like he, he had seven swords put in his heart. It was not his choice to leave. Like that's the thing. You could you could honestly save it by just having Mortlock be the one to just multi bisect Percy, and then Percy had to like regen or something. You could avoid this entire issue. But by having it be Percy who have his own free will versus actually being actually being executed by one of your ops. It just it just gives a whole different tone, and it feels like, like it feels like Nakoba knows there should be some character drama here. Like once again, Future Man speaking, one fifty five covers the character drama a little bit, but I'm really really hoping there's more consequence. I get it, you gotta have a time skip, you gotta bring it back. Man, I'm hoping for more. But with that being the case, we see Percival in his new time skip fit now. Someone. In the comments, revealed to me. It was revealed to me in a dream. I'm kidding. It was revealed in the comment section of 155, I do believe, that Percy's outfit, his whole fit, is actually a reference to Teen Gohan, which is a misnomer. Uh, I think he's 10. I think he's actually 10. Yeah, I think he's 10 when he beats, though. I know, I know it's a comment that like he's 11. How old, hold on, let me, let me, let me double check. I'm pretty sure he's actually 10. I remember, I remember hearing about that from Carthus Dojo. How old was. Gohan, because they weren't in the time chamber for a full year. They only went in for like 10 months. How old was Gohan when he beat Cell? Let me just make sure. So people think 9, some people think thing, uh, 11. Chronologically, he's either 9 or 10 years old. As his birthday is 757, and Cell games will make 26, 7, 6, 7. Okay. Biologically, he had to be 10 or 11 years old, given the majority of the time he spent it. Yeah, but he only spent 10 months in the time chamber. So I, I'm going to go with he was 10. But which is ironic considering Percy's now 18 but a lot of people someone said that this 
outfit is based on his Cell Games fit, Gohan Cell Games fit, and I do see the vision now. Notably with the cloak sort of acting as Piccolo's... I forget what it's called. Like he had, Piccolo has shoulder pauldrons in the wraparound. So there are just no shoulder pauldrons here, but the wraparound definitely reminds me of Piccolo's whole wraparound. I forget what it's called. His cape. And then obviously the V into the bare chest is a staple of the Super Saiyan 2 Teen Gohan fit. The only difference is the sleeves and the cufflinks, those don't exist. And obviously the patches are... I'm interested to see what this outfit looks like colored. Because I'm assuming these patches have a reason. Like, once again, he's sort of back to the whole onesie look, which he's kind of been famous for, except now it's a full-size onesie. Kind of like a super extended Sora fit. But, with that being the case, I can see the reference to the Team Gohan fit. And I'll take it. If it ends up being purple, and this is just straight up a rip of the Team Gohan outfit, or the 10-year-old Gohan outfit, I'll take it. I'll take it. And ultimately, it's not a bad design. In fact, it is infinitely better than what Percy was rocking before the time skip was over. I'll, I'll, t I'll take, I'll take, or before pre time skip was over, I will take what I can get. That boy was looking ugly. <laughs> I'm not going to sugarcoat it. That boy was looking nasty. So I'll take what I can get with the fit, and the fit is clean enough. It's clean. It's a, it's a little clean, calm little fit. Calm little fit. Oh, calm little fit. So we'll take that. We'll take that. And with that being the case, I'll, I'll admit, I, uh, I get why you don't keep the longer hair. Because Tristan's going to have that longer hair. And notably, Nakaba gets allegations of same face syndrome all the time. The allegations come from me and many others. But he gets allegations of same face syndrome all the time. And one of the best ways to differentiate your character, especially if you do get critiques for same face syndrome, is the hair. So giving Percy his original iconic cutback does make sense. And notably, I don't think... Like, technically, everyone else also pretty much maintains their pre-time skip cut. Like... The only difference is Anne now wears it more consistently in a ponytail instead of down. And Donnie's... I think Donnie's is literally the exact same. Except now his hair has finally grown back. And then Nasi's hair has just gotten longer. But I was, like, low-key... It sounds crazy. I would... Like, personally, if I, I get why you wouldn't, though. Because it's gotta be annoying. I can't believe... I can't imagine how annoying this would be to draw every single time. And then you gotta ink it. Once again, Nakam was doing this all himself. I would have kept it... Not, like, to the floor length, I understand that, but, like, Super Saiyan 3 length. With that same amount of, like, puffiness and thickness that his regular hair has. You can still have the wings. You can still have the wings to make sure it's differentiated enough. Though I'm assuming the reason the wings don't show up so prominently here is because of all the extra hair weighing it all down. But I would have kept it, like, Super Saiyan 3 length. To really differentiate between pre-time skip and post-time skip. Obviously, this post-time skip, first of all, is taller and buffer, so they're gonna be able to tell regardless. But... I, w I wish he kept a bit more of the hair. It's kind of like how I feel about Bon and Mel losing all their hair as they come back from Purgatory. They kind of just cut it off and went back to basics. I wish they kept some bit of it to show like the change in the proper passage of time. But I suppose the rest of Percy's physiology does that. And once again, on an artistic level, and as an artist who has an art style, an art style myself, I understand. I also run into the same face syndrome all the time. I get why the hairstyle staying exactly the same is a smarter artistic choice. And also, this is actually easier for the animators, because they'll just be able to draw this more by memory, rather than having to deal with a whole new design of the drawing Percival. But, with it being the case, we see that King declares, Percival of the Four Knights of the Apocalypse. The captain, uh, whether the King of Leonis, told me you were a knight of prophecy that save all of Britannia. You have a great mission ahead of you, no doubt. But before that, I want you to remember one thing. Who? what could this thing be, King? But, one thing I do like... Is that King? Admittedly, I wish I ended a bit more. Of it. I wish I ended a bit more, just in general. This, but you know, whatever. Sorry, but one thing I do like, I like how King, the previous hero generation guy. Wow, that scared me. I do like how King, the previous hero generation guy, is able to openly acknowledge and sort of pass the torch on to Percy, in the sense, right? He acknowledges him by his full title. Percival of the Four Knights of the Apocalypse. You are a knight of prophecy that will save all Britannia. King was not a knight of prophecy or anything, but he was a knight responsible for the saving of all Britannia before. So this is him essentially passing on that torch to Percy. Being like, hey, I'll be here. And there's even going to be a moment later on where King is going to once again sort of act as a legacy character, a resource, a mentor in a way, by allowing Percival to ask questions. I do like how the passing of the torch is being suddenly laid here. I think it's nice. I think it's neat. I think it's clean. But with it being the case, we see that King implores Percy to remember. 
While you were asleep, there was one person up there who kept talking to you every day, who worked tirelessly to make you open your eyes. And, of course, that person is Nasians, And even Nasian is like, wait, wait, Pops, don't do this. And we see that Nasian says, that that doesn't really matter, Fairy King. I, I would I would always lift his toes if I had to to wake him up. And we see that Percival says, oh, I know that. Putting in all that work for my sake. The things you said to your father and to Tior. So, Percy... Once again, he does look a bit older here. I like the more square jawline. But we're, once again, slowly getting hints that Percy is different. Or more different than we've already found out he was. If you'll remember during the fight with Worldane, he very readily goes to kill her. Like, like he, go, he, goes, he goes immediately. Like, there is no hesitation. He chants the spell and drains all the life force out of her. In fact, he's shocked that she's still alive. Like, generally bamboos, like, whoa, was it you to live that, my G? So, Percy, mentality-wise, has already shifted a bit in that way. But, in terms of information, Percy is extremely well-listened. Extremely knowledgeable. He knows what was happening while he was... How? I don't know. Presumably life spirit information? Once again, Percy's role as a life spirit and like where he ranks amongst them is yet to be confirmed. Based on Ironside in the fight with Bond, summoning an extremely powerful spirit, and likely Ironside's own predilections against summoning a weak life spirit in regards to taking care of his son or providing his son a vessel, it's very, very, very likely that ultimately Percival was an extremely powerful life spirit, or at least one of extreme high ranking and ability, considering he has command over many others. So, it's very likely that Percival technically never was gone. Maybe he was there the entire time sort of acting as an omniscient, omnipresent being watching over all his friends. Which is creepy, in a way, because, you know, Percy. But, I don't know. It may, it may explain his change in mentality, his ready access to information, and his more laissez-faire views, let's put it, on life and death. I don't know. Once again, we have no context for what happened for those two years when Percy was asleep. Was he being trained by the other life spirits? Was he simply remembering what he used to be? Or was he simply watching? We don't know. But with it being the case, we see that Nasians gets... Oh, thanks thanks for all that, Nasians. Nasian gets all blushy. Lips get all plush. You know, there is an scratching and feeding for they met. Ands, man. Ands, man. Ands, man. I know that this arc has a purpose. Nakaba Suzuki. It's to give me hope. To give me hope that Nasians will be okay. And Nasians will make it to the end. But Nakaba, Nakaba Suzuki, I know your game. I know your game. And you play it well, my friend. You definitely do play it well. And you excite me in many different ways, reading your manga and get me attached to many of your characters. But Nakaba Suzuki, I know you. You devious and dastardly individual. So you set up this love triangle. Between Nasians and, and Percy. But I know you, Nakaba Suzuki. I know you. Oh, 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 I know you very well, my friend. This love triangle will not end well. Not in the sense that someone will go unloved, but in the sense that it won't be much of a triangle. Will it, Nakaba? Nasians is going to fall, aren't they? Don't worry, Nakaba. I'm mentally prepared. You won't get any tears out of me. You probably will. But we see that Percy also admits, Oh, and I now know why you never took baths with me either. You know I wouldn't care about that. Let's go on together next time. Raw. Meat out. I suppose you don't have meat to show out. But you got something. I'm trying to see it. But once again, Percy. Listen in the conversations he shouldn't have been there for. Like, I could get him possibly knowing Chori's name and some stuff that they talked about based on the fact that we saw the life spirit floating behind him and being the one that healed Nassim's arm. But, outside of that, how does he know unless he was spying on Nassim's in the bath? That's a little, uh, it's a little creepy, Percival. You, uh, you freaky deaky fellow. But, with it being the case, 
we see that Nasty is like, oh, together? What? This is so sudden. But, but Percy, I, I still don't have meat to lay out. And we see that Tiori is like, oh, what a dimwit. But I don't buy it anymore. I really don't. Percy, Percy kind of hit that. He's in that weird existential horror category where I just don't know. Like, now now the trust that I used to not have for the Life Spirits, I literally have a video on the channel if you go back far enough, talking about how I do not trust the Percy, the little mini Percy gang. I thought they were all a little creepy, weird, too knowledgeable, too sentient. I feel the same way about Percy that I felt about them. Until I get more explanation, I'm happy to have Percy back, but I am slightly mortified of him. Because he knows way too much and is way too casual about the level of information he has and what that level of information reveals. I don't know, Percy, I'll trust you. But with it being the case, we see King smile and walk over to Nasians and say, Nasians, I, I want to give you something. Come up to me. Uh, okay. King hits the and flicks something into existence. This is a piece of my sacred spirit spear. Just a piece, but it's still boasting its fair share of power. The sacred tree will transform in many ways to help you, in response to your wishes. Uh, are you sure? This is so valuable. Wow, lucky him. <laughs> and someday, when you return to this realm, and the time comes to succeed me as the fourth fairy king, I will give you the whole spear. A? Yeah, I'm kidding. But, cool things. Number one. Why does Nazis need a piece of your spear? And why isn't the fairy tree just giving him one? Or a spirit sword? Or his own spirit spear? Like, why, why not? Because Nazis is their own individual. Accepted and acknowledged by the tree as the eldest child. Nazis, or no, king. It's not like you inherited, inherited Basquias or whatever Dahlia's spirit spear was called. You just got your own. Why is the fairy tree hooking Nazians up? In fact, you don't want to give away pieces. Giving out pieces of your spirit spear makes you weaker. At least according to Nakama in that one interview from forever ago. Or that one Q&A question. So dude, I'm not sure you want to do that. I, I think Nazians should just ask for, his, ask for their own. Right? Like, there's that. Two, where is Basquias? Where is it? Can I have it? <laughs> no, sorry. That, that, was, that, was the, that was the monster inside me demanding it. But like... Where is it? Can I have Basquiat's, please? No, but legitimately, I don't fully understand where the other spirit spirits are. I low-key thought Nasi was going to leave with one of them, because Dolly is still missing, or at least hasn't been mentioned. And, well, you know, Galaxini is, you know, not with us anymore. So I was hoping they'd get theirs, but I'll take Nasi to get a piece of the spirit spear, and I'm interested to see what transformations they get access to, considering it's so tiny. But still, it's neat to see King pass it on. Another thing, though, King... What makes you so certain that Nasians will, one, have to succeed you, and two, can? Once again, King, when Gloxinia was sealed away, Dahlia was just born from the fairy tree. You're, when your other big sibling, because technically, remember, all the royal family is technically related, King and Gloxinia are brothers. Like, not, even, not even like in an indirect weird way, no, like their parent is just the fairy tree. So, King, Gloxinia, Dahlia, Gerharde, and Elaine, all siblings. Like, the fairy tree will just make another one, King. Like, you, you don't you don't have to worry about Nazian suddenly coming and succeeding the throne. And two, King, buddy, you're only 1,318. At least, I think, according to the wiki. Hold on, let me double check. King, similarly sins. King, similarly sins. What's your age, buddy? What's your age? What is it? Show me the trail. 1300 plus. Okay, so they don't have it. But assuming he's 1300 at the start of Sins, then the 18 year time skip, he's 1318. King, buddy, your heart has been around for 3000 plus years, dog. In fact, let me just check her. For, I feel like I've seen 4000 for your heart somewhere. But I may just be uh, to weaken. Let's see, your heart doesn't even have her age listed. Oh no, yeah, it is. Approximately 4200. And notably, I was gonna say, yeah, she's alive. Big, Bing chilling. King, if you live half as long as she does, Nazians won't become king for another thousand years. At a bare minimum. So, buddy, unless you're planning to die sometime soon, there is no succession plan. You're, you're king. The king 
for a minute. So, buddy, I'm not. I think you rushed a little bit, but I understand. Just giving Nasin's the gift overall. But with it being the case, we see Nasin smile and be like, "Oh, I'm not going back. My homeland's always going to be Britannia. Besides, I have no interest in taking the throne. My mission is to become an apothecary better than Ordo ever was." So yeah, Nasin just doesn't care. Not about the royal line. Not about success. None of that. They're, they're so indifferent. And I'll be honest. Call me crazy, call me Buka Bonkers, I also kind of agree. Not just for, like, the lore reasons that I just mentioned, but also, as much as Nasin's is their biological kid, to quote Guardians of the Galaxy 2, he may have been your father, boy, but he wasn't your daddy. Like, legitimately, King is only properly acknowledged the familial relationship between themselves, or between Nasin's and themselves, today. Like, like, all the incident happened today. He's known for a while, but it's been today. Yeah, that's it. Nasin's has no obligation to this place. I mean, sure, you held him for two years, but still, that's a fraction of a fraction of Nasin's life. And Nasin's would have a very, very long life. They're, Nasin's has no obligation. Especially since, hey, it's going to sound mean and cruel and devious and diabolical, but King and Dan suck. They lost their firstborn. They let their first child get changelinked. Their first. They proceed to pop out six more. Buddy, if I was Nazis, I wouldn't care either. I want to become king of these people I don't know and the people I don't care about. I barely identify as a fairy. I was raised as a human by humans for humans. It's like if Vegeta landed on Earth as a kid, grew up there, and then somehow the Saiyan race survived and he came back and said, hey, come be king. Your dad's about to die. If I was Vegeta, I'd be like, no. I don't know you people. You have nothing to do with me, and I have no obligation to you outside of my bloodline, which I didn't have control over. So, honestly, I can't knock Nazis for being like, laissez-faire. I mean, like, whatever. I owe you nothing. You've done nothing for me. And then by the time you did, me ain't everything worse. But we see that King is just like, oh, how could you? I trusted you, and you just let me to get fat. And we see that Diana's like, wow, ruthless. Just like someone I know. I don't know who she's talking about. If someone can tell me who she's talking about here, I'd really appreciate it. Maybe Bond? Maybe Merlin? Maybe Mel? I have no idea who she's talking about here. Maybe Matrona? I have no clue. But with it being the case, we see that Tiori declares, Nasi! Phrasing! And I'll, I'll, I'm going to lay it clear. In fact, you know, I'll wait one second. Oh, uh, sorry. That didn't come out right. I just mean I won't live here. I'll stop by for visits. You've been here for two years, Nasi. But I'll say, well, you better, all right? That's a promise. All your brothers and sisters will be waiting, Mortal declares with a chadly stance. All right. So, now that the arc is over, I can give you my solid opinions and my solid ranking of the fairy kids. Not seen that one, obviously, but that's cheating. They, they've had way more time to be a character than every other one. Myrtle at two. Myrtle's goaded. I, I'm sorry, I just like Myrtle. Myrtle at me. Six is at three. Six is goaded. Belt at four. Belt to me. Zana at five. She's to me. Zillion at six, because she got one shot. <laughs> then Tiore at seven, and then Pow at eight. I just I just still despise Pow. But yeah, I'll admit. I'll admit, it's not it's not really like there wasn't really a good showing for these kids. They, 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 it's nice to have them. And I found out I found out like in an interview that apparently Nakama just made their designs. He because he had he was like forced into making this many characters because he just offhandedly mentioned that they had seven kids like he didn't realize what they would actually mean if he had to show them, and I can kind of tell that by how they were written, which is unfortunate, but still I'll take it. But Tiora just didn't end up doing it as a character, especially for a character who was kind of introduced as a focal point of this arc overall, beat for beat, pound for pound, she kind of just is, and not in, like the good way. So I don't know. I'm not. I'm a, I'm a bit. I. Myrtle drastically exceeded my expectations. Six is drastically exceeded my expectations. But Tiori, if I had any expectations, she fell far beneath them. So, more ball. But with it being the case, we see that Nasians is happy to come back and visit his baby siblings. We see King rub his eyes and shrink back down. But, once again, going back to the whole idea of the passing the torch role and the whole idea of, okay, I was a hero, you are now the hero. Let's see if we can exchange information. Let's see if I can help you out in any way. King asks, now, Percival, hmm? Before you leave my realm, do you have anything you'd like to ask me? Whatever it is, I'll answer you. Once again, King playing the successor role, sort of handing the torch off to Percy. Once again, Diane is in that exact same position. She's doing absolutely nothing but standing there. 
Yeah, why? I'm sorry. I know why. It's because Nakam. It's Nakam's fault. Diane is not your fault. I know it's not your fault, Diane. Just like it isn't Gelda's fault. Just like it isn't Elizabeth's fault. But Diane, why? But we see. And that person will ask, Yeah! Were you okay with having the drug of your get stolen? And then Sixes comes into Wombo Combo and says, For sure. None of this would have happened if you just gave, Nas- gave it to Nasing's first thing, huh? And we see King get absolutely Wombo Comboed in thick form. And we see Nasing's come and support their father and say, Hang in there, Fairy King. But... Once again, to come to King's defense, I've done, I've done it before and I'll do it one more time because we're the end of the arc. I do agree with Percy wholeheartedly. There's no reason the Dragon should have been stolen. King is far too experienced, far too powerful, far too dangerous, far too lethal, and knows the cost and weight of patience that would take for the Dragon to respawn and the danger it poses being in the hands of the enemy. The fact that he let it be stolen is actively insane to me. For a warrior of his caliber, of his knowledge and his experience, yeah, there's no excuse. Absolutely no excuse. I will give him a pass, though, for once again not immediately giving the drug over to Nazis. Once again, he had to confirm that Nazis was his kid. And two, the reason he says that next. And three, it would have really worked, because person wasn't really sick or anything, his spirits just left. So realistically, just as the Drogo de Yor would have done nothing for Myrtle, even though they tested it anyway, the Drogo de Yor would have done nothing for Percy. As King says, he only would have woken up to mortal danger anyway. So wasting on Joker Day or on a Percy would be waste. So regardless, I don't blame King's decision for not giving the drug to Nazis. I blame King's decision for letting the drug get stolen. That is absolutely insane. As powerful as you are, as many spirit spirits you have access to in your own realm, and you still let your top resource get taken, wild to me. But with it being the case, we see King apologize. I'm, I'm sorry. I just wanted to spend as long as I could with you. I I guess I'm a selfish father. Once again, we see Nasians go quiet as Diane claps. So I decided to speak. And she says, Look, Lazoga de Yor doesn't matter right now, does it? We can just harvest it again in a thousand years. For reference, Diane hasn't lived a thousand years. King is only 1300 plus. I don't know why they're so blase about this. Like, like that I don't get. That I don't get. I know they're both basically immortal. Giants and fairies seemingly, mostly royal fairies seem to have infinite lifespans. But they say a thousand years like that's nothing. When King himself has barely lived over a thousand years and Diane herself hasn't experienced a thousand years of living yet. What? And here's the thing. It's, they're acting like the Joker de Yor was just like used up. No, it's in the hands of your mortal enemies. Who wants you dead? Like, I, I don't know. They're, they're so lackadaisical about it, which sort of underplays the importance and potency of the Dragon de Yor. Which is kind of... It's, it's, it's wow. I'll admit, it's really, it's really whack. I'm not going to lie. But with it being the case, we see that Diane says, Family, though, if you lose that, there's no getting it back. If everyone's okay, then I think that's the best thing of all. And that's sweet. And I agree with her. That's the, I, that's the thing. I'm going to catch only two with Diane in Four Nights. Half of me is like, Diane, please do something physical. You are one of the titular characters of the popular fighting any manga, Seven Deadly Sins. Please, actually be useful in the fight. But at the same time, it's like, darn, she. She still did perform a fantastically motherly role. This arc, which is more I can say for Elizabeth, which is more than I can say for Gelda. So she got to do something. I was kind of sad it wasn't hands. And the moment she tried to throw a hand, she got one shot. Can tank the Supreme Deity's God Lightning, but heaven forbid a Shock Stinger hits her right in the... And boom, she's out for one hit. Darn, dog. I'm sorry, Diana. I did you dirty. But with it being the case, we see Tori's like, yeah, Mom's right. And King happily realizes that he has the best wife in the world. And we see both Percival and Nasians laugh. And prepare to go on their merry way. And we see that Nasian says, well... Fairy King, Giant Queen, thanks for all your help. And both King and Diane are like, oh, oh, he's really doing this to us. Okay, fine, I guess. Sure, no problem. Uh, take care, all right? And they both look sad, Diane even playing with her hair. And Percy's like, dude, if you don't hop off your own tip that you don't have, anything else you want to say? And Nasim grips up, gets the gripper all nice and tight, and says, hey, listen! Mom, Dad, bye for now. There we go. Ten out of ten arc. I take back all the criticism. That's it. That's all I need here. All I need here. Any any of the complaints I had before, uh, not existent. Wipe wipe them all away. The, ba- banish them. Banish them from this side of reality. Absolutely. That's all I need here. Man, once again, 
This comes from my love for King and Diane as characters. Once again, like I mentioned before, King in a time long past was my favorite sin. So seeing him finally get to be acknowledged by the son he lost, the child he lost 18 years ago, and see Diane, someone who wanted a family more than anything else, finally be acknowledged by her family that she lost 18 years ago. Beautiful, man. See? And Malcolm, he knows how to tug up our heartstrings. It's just that sometimes I feel like he doesn't write other things well. But we see that's the end as they leave the fairy realm. Never to be seen for another, like, 100 chapters. And we see that Percival says, All right, Alcians, let's get going. And Alcians goes on to say, You bet! And Percy cracks his neck as they look into the void of the world that surrounds them. We've got King Arthur to beat. If we gotta win, we gotta win if we wanna save Britannia. And they both leap off, flying into the great unknown. Beautiful shot here. I love how Nakua drew this, both of them flying. Percival, confident and free. Nasi and still a bit shaky on it. Beautiful. I like to see the comparison between the two. And we see that ultimately, Percy's ready to roll. He's like, all right. First things first, let's reunite with Donnie and Anne. I gotta show her my new meat. And we see that Nasin says, yeah, true. So don't you have to show me your new meat? And we see that he says, boy, but they're really gonna be angry at me, huh? As he knows, he made a terrible choice two years ago. And Nasin says, oh, no, I doubt that. Naka was not gonna allow that kind of deep character conflict. And we see as Nasin begins to fall, Percy snags his hand, or their hand, and says... And Nasi explains, sorry, I haven't gotten, I, English, sorry, pencil can't read. I haven't gotten, quite gotten the knack for flying down yet. And Percy says, <laughs> no problem. Want to hold hands till you do? And Nasi blushes a little bit and is like, oh, I'd love to. And I know maybe this isn't the most appropriate thing to say, but Percy, please don't show Anne or new me. No, <laughs> just show me. No. Huh? Go ahead. Getting to adventure with you again like this, Percival? I, I just couldn't be happier, right? They're going to die. I, I am, um, I almost want to put, if, if Nakaba, if Nasians makes it to the end of this series alive, I'm going to make a promise here and now. The thing is, this video is going to get like two views, so I know no one's going to remember this promise. That's why this is the perfect time to make it. I'll make this promise right now. I will eat three foot long hot dogs on camera i did raw okay maybe not I'll, I'll have to put something on i cannot eat three foot long hot dogs dry i will literally choke but i will eat three foot long glizzies on camera chili glizzies covered it slathered in meat i will i will eat them if nasians makes it to the end of this vlog i'm making this promise here and now in chapter 153 if not, he makes it to the end. This, if this ain't a death flag, bro, they're dying, I'm telling you. But we see that Percy says, yeah, me too. Can't wait for you to die for my character development. And we see they both fly off. But Percy asks a question. So, uh, Nasians, when are you going to turn into a boy or a girl? And we see Nasians ask, oh, um, which would you prefer, Percival? And Nasians, you know the answer to that. And Percival says, hmm, both would be kind of neat to see. And Nasians simply asks, please, give me a straight answer. But unfortunately, Nazians, no matter how straight the answer, you're going to die. But regardless, A.W. chapter, A.W. chapter. Nah, call it a little W chapter. Once again, I do have some issues with it. There's more so issues structurally with the entire arc. I think this is a wrap-up to the Fairy King's Forest arc. And I'm happy that Nazians got massive buffs, got an awakening, got new abilities. And I'm happy that everyone else is happy. They got to end off on a pretty positive note, minus the loss of the Droga de Or. Hopefully nothing bad will happen from that ever but still with that being the case i hope you guys enjoyed the review if you made it all the way to the end of this video please leave leave void hope void as in like this void right here and hope as in percy void hope in the comment section down below i like to thank you so much for watching please remember to leave a like share comment and subscribe and make sure that little case bell so you don't miss out on any videos that come to the channel also also i do have to have a patreon below where you can support me for as little as one kind of one no more things like exclusive videos early content and more so now become a member of the channel for as little as three dollars a month to get the same perks and more so those perks will include the live reactions to this very chapter and free reactions of all my videos and if you come into a $25 dollar patreon you can well a 25 dollar member you can order whatever video you want also, 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 I do have a link to my Ko-Fi in the description down below where you can drop 5 beans for a short video, 25 beans for a long video, or any beans at all. Any support is always greatly appreciated. Now, I like the day of social watching once again, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. This is Nagalo Pencil, writing off.
Alright, lady, we thank you to our three dollar members: Zena, Greyhound, Astro, Eternal Flame, NMA, Real Rare, G Prosper, Red Wolf, four seven six five, and Paris Arnold. Alright, lady, we another big ol' thank you to our five dollar patrons: Sean, Sammy, Midnight Lord Twenty One, Kevin, and Carnacion, Josh Brown, and A Plus A. And then like they have a great big thank you to our $7 members, Autumn Mornings Lazo, Fine, and that guy. And then like they have a great big thank you to our $10 members, Robbie Uchia, Jay Warrior, and Akids Void. And then like they give big, hefty, juicy thank yous to our $10 patrons, Panda Goat, Michael Williamson, Metal Solid Crisis, Waki Munoz, Waki Munoz, and Idemokami. And I'd like to give the biggest, juiciest, meatiest, sloppiest, and heftiest thank you of them all to our $25 patron, Calvin Elder.